Well, good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, depending upon where you are in the world, and welcome to DevOps.com webinar. I'm Charlene O'Hanlon, moderator for today's event, and I welcome you. As always, we have a great webinar on tap, but before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items we need to go over. First of all, today's event is being recorded, so if you miss any or all of the event, you will be able to access it later. We will be sending out an email after today's webinar that contains a link to access the webinar on demand. And we are taking questions from the audience, so if at any time during today's presentation you have a question for our speaker, please don't wait, don't hesitate, just use your GoToWebinar control panel and submit your question and we'll get to as many questions as we can before the end of today's webinar. Okay, with that, we'll kick off today's webinar, which is not just performance testing, introducing Blaze Meter's new continuous testing platform. Our speaker today is Keith Pusey, who is Client Services Consultant, Enterprise Software Division at Broadcom. Welcome, Keith, thanks for joining me today. Thanks, Charlie. Okay. Well, I know you've got a great presentation on tap, so I'm going to go ahead and put myself on mute and let you get right to it. Thanks a lot. So, so welcome. Um, as Charlene said, my name is Keith Pusey. I'm part of the, the Continuous Testing Business Unit within Broadcom. Uh, and today we're going to talk about uh, the extension we've made to BlazeMeter. So we've taken BlazeMeter and extended the functionality to make it a complete continuous testing platform. Now, before we get into the you know, what it is, we're going to spend a few minutes just going through a, a few slides just to kind of look at the challenges and then how the, the platform helps. And then the most part of the webinar will be a demonstration of the product. So let's start with you know, what is the challenge? And the reason you're on the call, you probably know what the challenge is. Now, today we have to deliver software faster. There's a, an ever demanding from our business to actually deliver software faster but also with quality. There's no point in speeding up the process of delivery if what you're delivering has bugs and has a poor impact for your end users. And now what we've found through various research we've done is that the, the main bottleneck for this is still the testing and QAing of software. Now the time being spent either looking for environments or for actually running the tests is the issue. So what what you do is you have to cut back on how much testing you can run, or you spend time provisioning environments that while you're doing your testing. Now we did another report with Sajeti, and what they found was that you no, know, today organizations are trying to they're trying to deliver daily or hourly. But the limitation they're seeing with that is the first thing is that a lot of their tests are still not automated. So as soon as you get into manual testing, obviously you get into the issue with, with speed and the time it takes to run those tests. Um, also, how long it takes for test environments to be made available. So it may be that you need access to an environment or an application and you may have to wait for that. You may have to request that and it may take several days or weeks or months to get access to it. And that can also delay your, your testing. And thirdly, we look at um, time spent on actually clarifying requirements. Now that's not part of the continuous testing platform. We have another product that does that. Um, but as part of our report, that's the, the third thing we identified was that planning of requirements and mapping requirements is also a big issue when it comes to you know, delivering software at speed. So the solution, um, the solution is Blazemi, a continuous testing platform. So as I said, we'll be showing a demo in a few minutes. And what we've done is we've taken uh, BlazeMeter, which is no best of breed in performance testing, and we've extended it to add more functionality. So we've added things like we can auto-generate tests. So we've now created a recorder that allows you to record your tests and then play them back on the platform. And we're going to show you that in just a second. We can also now, as well as running performance tests, we can run uh, functional UI tests and API tests. Uh, and also we've extended the functionality to allow you to create mock services on the fly. So you can build a mock service within the UI uh, and start it and either start that on the cloud or start that on premise. So we will be talking about that in just a little while. 
And the last tab is, is API monitoring. So the ability to actively monitor APIs, and this can be monitoring in production or monitoring in your test environments, and not just monitoring for errors, but also monitoring for performance um, and latency. Now I mentioned the, uh, the you know, this, is, this is a SaaS product. So you can log on to our blazemeter.com website today and start using the product. However, we can deliver it in different ways. Uh, you can use the product purely SaaS. So you can log into the UI on our SaaS platform. You can run your tests across various cloud source supports. As you can see down the right hand side here, we have support for Amazon, Azure, Google. Um, you can do a hybrid approach. So the hybrid approach is where you can actually deploy our agents within your firewall. So these are all Dockerized. You, you run them on, within your firewall on Docker. Um, they communicate with the platform. You can then choose to run your tests, your functional tests, performance tests within your firewall or outside or a combination. Uh, and we'll show you that during the demonstration. And the third way we can deploy is what we call private cloud. Um, now private cloud allows you to actually uh, use the UI within your firewall. So you can basically mask the data that you see on the screen. So it still uses our SaaS platform. You have the benefit of our SaaS platform. However, if you were to log into the product from the, the outside, what you see is the names of the machines, the IP addresses, they're all changed and they don't make any sense. They're all just labels. Uh, if you were to look at it from inside your firewall, you see all the real data. And that's what we call private cloud. So the data is all um, kept within your firewall, um, which obviously stops leakages. And all of this is built on open source. So a Blaze Meter has always been, been used, things like JMeter, Gatling. Uh, Taurus is our open source language we use for building tests, and we'll talk about that shortly. We've also integrated with things like uh, Selenium. So you'll see when we do our UI test, we're using Selenium. Um, we can take feeds from things like Wiremock and we can use Cucumber. So um, the product itself is built on open source uh, and Taurus itself is a, is a Broadcom product that is an open source product. Now let's, let's get on with the demo. So what I'm gonna do is just switch to my demonstration system. So as I said, no, this is a, a SaaS product. So if you go to blazemeter.com, you'll get to our landing page. Uh, I'm going to go straight to our testing screen. So I'm going to click on start testing. Now, once I've logged in, what you'll see along the top here is we have our various functions. So we have our functional testing, our performance testing, mock services, and API. And what we're going to do is over the course of the demonstration, we'll walk through each of these tabs and show you how we can actually do each of these functions. Uh, but to start with, I'm going to show you this, this application. So for the, the, the demonstration, um, we use this sample application purely as a, an application that we can, we can test and we can work with. So it's just a, an application called Digital Bank. Uh, and what I've done already is I've recorded my tests. So within my browser, if I go up here, um, I've installed the Chrome plugin. So here's my Chrome plugin. Uh, this is straight from you know, the, the, the Chrome store. Um, I've installed it into Chrome and I've already recorded uh, my test. So once I've recorded it, I clicked the record button. I then went through the UI navigating what I wanted to do. I can use the editor down here to edit that recording. So here's the, the output of that recording. And what you'll see is if I go to the top, now I'll go to a certain page, I put in certain details, and if I replay this test, make that go a bit quicker, what you'll see is uh, this is the test that I captured during the recording. So I wanna go to this landing page, I wanna log in as a certain user, I want to go to certain screens, validate that those screens load correctly. Uh, you'll see in the test on the right hand side here, as well as actually the navigation, we also at certain points are doing assertions. So there you see an assertion where we're doing a cert on the text that came back from that test. And no, this is a like a debugger for the test that we're just validating that the recording we made, the script is, is valid. Um, I can choose to modify this. So I can come into here where I've got this assert. I can modify this assertion. I can add other functions. Uh, I can modify the, the whole way the script from inside the little IDE. Now this recording, so I record this just by doing the, the screen clicks. 
if I go back to the plugin, um, I could choose to run that test straight away. So if I clicked on this run button over here, I could take that test and run a performance test by just saying run my JMeter test. I could run an API test. I could run my UI test. Or I could run what's called uh, an end user experience test. And that's a combination of performance and UI test. And I'm going to show you that in just a second. So like I said, if I were to click on these links, basically that would take my test I've just made in the browser, send it to, to the platform and run the test. What we're actually going to do is save these scripts and then I'll show you how we go through the process of building the test in the UI. So I've already gone into the save function and saved these scripts. And what you'll see is I've got these, these three scripts. So the one recording has created three scripts. Uh, one is a JMeter script. So that's the one we use for our performance testing. The second one is a Selenium script, and that's the one obviously for our functional testing. And the third one is the combined script. And that's where we've combined a performance script with a functional script. And you'll see that in just a second. So at this point, we've used the recorder to create our our test. We can go to Blaze Meter. And the first thing to do is create this test. So I'm going to click on the Create Test button. Now at this point, um, you can see down here, there's a link there that will take me off to the Chrome store to get the extension if you haven't got the extension. Um, I can create an API test or a GUI test. I'm going to create a GUI test. Now all we have to do at this point is name the test. So on the left hand side, we're going to name it. And on the right hand side, we then define uh, what the test is. So I'm going to upload the script that we recorded in the plugin. Now what I actually did is I, I took the recording that we made in the plugin and I added one line to it. And I'll show you that in just a second. So we're opening that script. Um, we will parse the script and validate. So at this point here, you can see we're doing validation. We're validating that the script is valid and it passed. At the bottom of the screen, you may have noticed that this mock service configuration did something. And so here's the script. If I scroll down, I added a dependency to the script. So I took the script from the recorder. I just added this dependency. Now what this dependency is, is um, saying that for this test to run, we need uh, a certain mock service to be, be available. And also that mock service needs to have certain transactions. Now we define that within the test script itself. Um, and whenever we run this test, the application will ensure that that mock service is available and that the transactions are um, correctly loaded into that mock service. So it doesn't matter if I run this test today, in a week, in a month's time, um, the dependencies will be made available to make sure they're running when we run the tests. So in our example here, I've just said I need this uh, Visa payment API service running uh, with certain uh, transactions, it's what we call a template. And in the bottom part of the screen, we've validated that that currently is available. So that, that mock service is there and it's currently running. Now, we can then choose where we want to run this test from. So we can change the location to run this test from different locations. And if I scroll down, you'll see it's, it's a simple script that basically is the one we just saw in the, in the recorder. And to run this, I just click Run Test. Now, this is now being provisioned on the cloud. We're standing up the relevant infrastructure to start the test. That will take a, a few seconds. So while it's running, we'll just go and look at a previous example so you can see what the output looks like. So this is the output from one of those functional tests. And what you've got on the screen is on the right hand side, uh, it's kind of a detail of all the steps we did in the test. So we can go down here and we can look at all the various uh, links that were clicked and what came back. If I click on one of these links, on the left hand side, the screen will change to show what the actual screen looked like at that point of the test. Now these aren't just uh, screenshots, this is actually a video. So I can choose to just play the video instead of uh, navigating down through the output here. Um, what you can do is just play the video. Uh, the the right-hand side will then navigate through the test as it's running. And you'll see on the left-hand side in the video now what actually was on the screen when we ran the test. 
Now on the right hand side, what you also see is we actually did have a problem. We had a, a broken, so if I just stop the video, we'll go and look at that. So here what you've got is, if I click on that, it will take us to the, where the test was. And what you can see is there was an error. Now that error was because um, I disabled an API that I needed. So the application failed. So the test has, has failed at that point. Uh, we can click on this link to get more details, but also on the right hand side, this little uh, kind of pay-per-click icon. Um, if you click on that, what you'll get is a, um, a, a link in your clipboard that you can send to someone, they can click on that link and it will take them straight to this part, this, this screen. So if you want to share this with, with your colleagues or someone that needs to debug this, you can use that link to get the, the URL to send to them so they can actually get back to this, this report. Now I can also click on this link here and that will take me to the actual error itself. So we've got the screen to show what the error was as far as the end user was concerned, but also we've got the error message that came back from the, the actual test itself to help us out debugging. And the th final thing we have here, if I click on the waterfall link, uh, we also have the waterfall that went with the test. So this is all the different loads. You can see we've got all the gets for the various pages and graphics. Uh, we can mouse over to see you know, the wait time, network time. So um, when we're debugging things like performance issue, obviously we can we have all the data here that we need to understand you know, perhaps why a page was loading slowly, uh, was it network, was it the application server. So that's our, our functional test. Now, what we can also do is run a performance test. So if I go to the performance tab, so in here, a bit like with the functional test, if I click on the create test button, we're gonna create a performance test. Now, if you look at this, um, if you're an existing BlazeMeter customer, this is basically a BlazeMeter screen. So if you're thinking of, you need to run a performance test, you define you know, how many users do you want to simulate? So I wanna simulate you know, 24,000 users. I wanna run a test, a soak test. I wanna run it for uh, 1,058 minutes. Yeah, so you're defining um, how much load you wanna create, how long the test is gonna run for, you can define things like ramp up time. So you can simulate a, a slow ramp up. So you don't just go to 24,000, you can ramp up over a period of time. So you can simulate users slowly coming onto your system to see how that affects your, your application. And we also then define um, where that load is gonna come from. So in this example, this location is saying uh, in Virginia on Amazon, we can add different locations. So we can say that we're gonna do, uh, some of that load's gonna come from Amazon in Virginia. We can say we want some of that load to come from Google in Virginia. We can scroll down further. Perhaps we wanna also get some load from Microsoft. And if I go to the very bottom of this screen, what you'll see at the very bottom is um, I've, I've deployed agents within the Broadcom network. So I could also choose to generate load from within my, our network as well as the load coming from these external sources. So this is very powerful because it allows you to create the load in the, not just the region that you want the load to come from, but also the platform that you'd like the load to come from. And finally at the bottom, when you're defining these tests, you can also then integrate with tools like uh, APM tools. So you can see in this APM section, uh, we integrate with the main APM tool sets. So this allows you to not just gather data from, no, you can generate load, and that when doing that, you can generate response times and data about the end user experience. Uh, when you include the APM integration, you can also gather data from the back end. So we can get data on the servers that are hosting these applications to understand as that load comes on the front end, how is it affecting the actual machines that are running the application. So I'm gonna go back to the top and we're gonna load the script. So again, this is the recording we made at the start. I'm gonna take that and load it. Now, when you load the script, uh, as, instead of using the sliders to define what you need to do, you can define it all inside the script. So you can see here, I've actually defined how many concurrent users I want. Okay, when the screen's just loaded. 
So we define how many concurrent users. Let me just refresh that. So here's our script. So um, we've got the hold time. So we're going to start this test. We're going to run it for 20 minutes. Uh, we want 50 concurrent users, a ramp up time of one minute. We've also defined a dependency. So like we showed you in the functional test, we can also include um, a mock service as a dependency. So what we're saying is to run this test, we need this mock service. And you can see here that mock service is available. And then below that, we have the test. So here's our test that we're going to run. Uh, and this is our um, JMeter test and also our, fun our functional test. If I scroll down, we can define things like the failure criteria, um, but also because this is a combined test, we can actually enable this end user experience, which allows us to then say, we want to run this Selenium test at the same time as our load test. Uh, and what that means is we're going to generate the load. And while that load is on the system, we're going to run functional tests at key points to understand how that load affects our functional test. And like I said, we could also then include things like integration with APM tools. So here I can say I want to integrate with APM. And that's basically it. We've now got that test ready. Uh, one more thing we can do, you probably notice the bottom here in network emulation, we can also use the network emulation to simulate different network conditions. So maybe you want to test, run this test as though it's going to have a Wi-Fi or you know, a poor 3G signal or poor 4G signal. A 5G signal. So you define what emulation you want. So if I choose like an LTE, you can also in include things like you want to change the latency, the packet loss. So as part of this test, it may be you want to simulate uh, you know, a slow connection over a slow network connection to understand how that would affect the performance. And once you've defined a test, what you do is you click run test. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to um, ensure that those dependencies are met. So in our case, that's a mock service. So we're now making sure that that mock service is available and that the transactions that we need for the test are loaded. And as soon as that's done, we'll then start to provision the, the load infrastructure. So as we said before, these are all running on the cloud. Um, this could be running on premise. Now, that's going to take probably a minute or so to get started. So while that's getting running, what we're going to do is go and look at the an example of this report. So here's one that we ran earlier. And this is a, a typical uh, blaze meter screen at this point. So what you're seeing on the top left hand corner is um, how many users we had running, how many concurrent users. Below that, we have the, the time. So the start time, the end time, how long the test ran for. We have the average hits, the average error or the error rate, our average response time. And this response time here is the 90% response time. So um, is a fairly, this is a test machine, but it's showing that we had a very slow connection. We had 6.75 for 90% of our response times, which is actually a poor, poor response time. And we're going to show you why in just a second. And in the graphs, what you see is this first part is the blue line is showing you the, the ramp up. That was us ramping the users up to 51. And then the blue line is showing you the hits and how they're affected by the load. And the right hand side is showing you the response time. So that shows you the um, what the response time was as the load was generated. Now, as we can see, about half of the test, our response time started to perform badly. and Obviously, as a, as a performance engineer, I now need to investigate what caused that issue. Uh, and from within, within the report, what you can then do is go to our timeline report, and that gives you all the details. So that first screen is very much the summary screen. Now, on the left-hand side, these are all the metrics that you can now use to further investigate this test. And I'm going to scroll to the very bottom to go to APM to start with. So when we ran the test, we integrated this with the APM tool. And the first thing I think of is, no, I had a response time issue. Was that because the CPUs were maxed out on my application server? So I can overlay those metrics. That's the two lines there. 
Um, and as you can see, actually, at the time we had the performance issue, the CPUs were actually quite low. So uh, it wasn't a case that our CPUs were being overloaded. We can also get data on the memory usage. Um, for drilling here, you'll see we've also got data from the database server, so down here. So there's lots of data being pulled from our, our backend systems that you can use to evaluate as you're looking at this test report. If I go back to the top, this first section here is actually our, our functional tests. So I can overlay onto the report the functional tests. So if I click on this functional test here, um, each of those dots on the screen is a functional test. So imagine this test ran for 20 minutes and at a certain period, we then ran functional tests to understand how the load was affecting the end user experience of our functional test. So each of these dots, oops, each of these dots is uh, one of those functional tests. And you can see that for the first part of the test, they're running about 3.8, 3.9 seconds. But then they started to perform badly. So now we're running at 9.6 seconds. So at this point, I can use this data to drill into this to understand know more about that functional test and perhaps why it was performing badly. So I'm going to click on that functional test. And what you can now see is this is basically what you saw in the first tab when we looked at the functional tests. Um, this is all the data we collected as part of these functional tests that we ran at the same time as our performance test. So if we look at one of these slow performing ones here, we can click on that. We can see each of the screenshots and we can see uh, what happened, what was being drawn, what was on the screen, um, to understand what the user was doing at this point of the test. And also we can scroll down, and like before, we have the waterfall report to understand you know, what was causing this poor performance. And if I scroll to the bottom of this, what we see is this big purple line down here. <laughs> There's actually um, a six second wait. So for some reason at that point, um, the application had a six second wait for a response and that caused the end user's poor performance issue. And on the left hand side, we actually see you now what that command was. So we did a, a post command to that part of the website and that was what caused the response time issue. Now, what this what we actually did for the, to create the demonstration is this URL we're looking at here is a web page that calls a backend API. So when we actually go into this web page and we go to this part of the application, um, we're actually talking to uh, an external API and we slowed that API down. So we went down, we slowed the API down to understand how a poor performing API would affect our end user experience. Now you may ask, you know, how did you slow down an API? Um, and we actually used a, a mock service to do that. So we took the, the API that we wanted to work with, we created a, a mock service of it. And with that mock service, we can now work with things like changing the response times. We can change, we can do negative testing and positive testing. Um, and we're gonna show you that next, how you would actually use a mock service. Um, before we go and do that, I've got one more thing to show you within the uh, performance testing section. And that is we can also compare these reports. So if you imagine that you've run a performance report uh, and you want to test um, how is it compared to a previous test that you've run, we can go to these reports. So I'm going to select a, a report like this one. So in this case, what I did is I ran various tests and we changed the hardware. So we had a single CPU, um, a dual CPU and a quad CPU. So I can use, I can look at my report, I can go to this compare report section. You then add the test that you want to compare. So I'm going to say I want to test, I want to compare these three reports. So these are all run on the same day at different times. But you then get a report that you can then use to do this comparison. So if I scroll down to our response time section here and we can just select there. I'm going to select that particular one. That showed me what the response time was when I had a single CPU. When I had a, a quad CPU, that was the response time. 
So you can see that we, we can see a clear um, improvement when we had you know, more CPU power, when we had quads, when we had duals, it was slightly slower, and obviously single was very slow. Um, but this could also be used, you want to compare, you, know, you had a, a, version, a new version deployed, you want to compare that version against the previous version. Uh, you can do the same with the comparison ports. Basically, it's comparing two runs of a test. It doesn't matter if it's different versions, different configurations, but it allows you to have that, that breadth of comparing your performance ports across different um, test runs. Now, if we go to the mock service tab, so as I said before, we actually created a mock service to um, as part of the previous test, and we used that to basically create a performance issue. Now, in the mock services, if I click on the learn more button, um, what this allows you to do is actually create a mock service from things like Swagger. We can use WizTools. Um, we can use a HAR file. So a HAR file, you can create a recording from inside a browser. We can also work with things like Wiremock and MockLab to import those. So there's many ways that you can actually create uh, a mock service. And to show you how easy it is, I'm going to click on the create a mock service. And we're going to point to uh, a HAR file. So this file here is a HAR file that I created earlier. So that HAR file just contains a recording of transactions. So I started the browser in developer mode. I did some functions and I saved that as a HAR file. That's now imported. And over here, we're going to name it. Now, if I open up this, so this light, this box is my mock service. What I've got here is obviously the name. In the bottom right hand corner, these are the transactions that we just pulled in from that HAR file. So each of these entries is a transaction. And we're going to go into transactions in just a little while. But at but a high level, what a transaction is, is you now when I get a request from this URL with certain criteria, I will match that and I'll respond with whatever you define is the response. Now, I'm going to go into transactions in just a little while, but in this case, we've just got these three very simple transactions. Now, you can set a priority that says that if you get a, a duplicate, which one wins when it comes to the matching. But a very quick way of getting a mock service is you load in the transaction you want to work with. You define in the location where you want this, lock, this uh, mock service to run. So if I say cloud, we're going to stand it up on the internet. If I say uh, a private location, we're going to stand it up within the Broadcom network on the agent that I've deployed. And obviously, that could be your own network. You then define if you want uh, a HTTPS or a HTTP connection and you click run mock service. And what we're now doing is taking those transactions and we're going to create a mock service. We're going to start that mock service. And in a few seconds, we'll then get back uh, the URL you can use to then access that mock service. Now, once a mock service is running, which is now running, so here's our URL, like so. Um, we would take that to then reconfigure our application and then that application would then talk to the mock service um, and the mock service would respond. Now we can also you know, stop a mock service. We can take what's called a template. We can take a copy of this and create a template. So you can build these mock services from a template. We can also, if I click on the parameters over here, do things like modify the think time. So if I were to say that was you no know, 6,000 milliseconds, basically the request coming in would be delayed. So we can slow down the responses from that. We can also change it so that uh, in the event that the inbound request doesn't match something, the transaction in the mock service, we could then redirect to the live system. So it allows you to have the option of uh, when you're testing, if you use certain transactions, that response will come from our mock service. Other transactions will be sent onto the live system. Now, as an example, if I go to my, my live system, which is just here. So this is the mock service that um, we used for the demonstration earlier. If I click on the log, 
Uh, what you actually see is the test is actually currently running. So that, that performance test we started a few minutes ago is currently running. And here's an example of the transactions. So what we have is um, we have an inbound request, which is here. So we're passing it certain data, this, this ID and this amount. And then basically uh, the mock services matched that and said, right, there's a match. And then this is the response. So um, the application sends certain data and we send back the responses. And if I refresh this, we'll see that this is currently running because we're currently running a live test against this mock service. So if I go and look at that transaction, so my asset catalog, here's some examples of transactions. So this one here, you can see that um, you define what the transaction is, now what type is it a get, a put, a post, an option, what the URL is. So when we see a get request for this URL, and it also has these um, parameters. So for a get, these are query parameters. Uh, and we can mix and match these. So we can say equals and contains, there's various ways you can set this rule up. But we're saying if this URL comes in, we have this name and it matches this code and also the amount matches this regex, then that's a match for this transaction. And in that occurrence, what we'll do is we will send back this response. And obviously this, the main part is the body here, this response, but we can also send back different codes. So if you want to simulate a certain inbound request, you want to get back you know, an invalid code. Um, it's very easy to set that up. So this is where we get into the negative testing. You want a negative test when you get certain responses, you want to get back a bad response to see what happens. You can do, you can make that happen inside a mock service, as well as the response side. So getting back a poor performing response as well, can all be done within a mock service. So <clears throat> what we just saw was obviously um, a poor performing uh, API can obviously cause a big issue to your customers. So how can you monitor those APIs? How can you make sure your, your APIs and your third party APIs that you use actually are available and they're responding correctly? And that's the last part of the, the platform. Um, and this is where we integrate with our API monitoring components. So I've just clicked on the API monitoring tab. And what we're looking at here is each of these boxes equates to a running test. Now my example, we're running these tests every hour. Um, but you, you dictate how often the test runs. Uh, each of the lines is a test. So if I just mouse over a couple of these, you'll see it shows when that test ran. And also the color denotes the status. So we can see that, that particular test there was run yesterday afternoon at 4.30. And also the test failed. So this is your summary of your, your APIs and perhaps third party APIs that you rely on. And from here, you can look at more details. We can drill into this particular test. And at a high level, what we have is the, you know, for the last 24 hours, we've had 100%. The last seven days, it's been 98.79. And the last 30 days is 99.72. Uh, these are details of the tests and if they passed or failed. We then get to the response time. So this, this API has been responding very well. So it's very consistent over the last no, seven days. Or 24 hours. We can then, um, if we're going to look at this actual test, uh, what this actual test is doing is a sequence of API steps. So this is the the test details, and what you see is um, the first thing we do is we do a get against a certain URL. We then send it uh, credentials. Now in our example, that then returns a token. We then take that token to then run the rest of the test. So if I go into this one, what we'll see is um, we have taken the token that came from our login, passed it to the next step in the test. This actual test is then doing a, a lookup. And if I look at the last response date, you'll see that was, this is the response that came back. So we, um, we took that login token, we then queried another API, which returned this data. We can then use things like assertions to check for certain values or certain response codes. So you can build a, a whole test um, checking to make sure that not just that it responds correctly, it responds in the correct um, response times. So in our assertions up here, 
Now you can set data on if you want certain status codes, if you want response times, response sizes, certain, you, know, you can define how a successful test will look by literally doing this, you know, do a get, send the data, look for this, this data, and that is how you're gonna match a, a good test. In our case, we're just checking the status code for 200. Now, the other thing you can do uh, when you define the test by going to the details here is you can do lots more. You can wrap this with scripts, um, but you can also, by default, do things like this. So you want to run this API test from different parts of the world. So you know, this API is used by a certain region of the world or globally. You can decide to say, I want to run this test from various locations. You then set a schedule that says you no know, run this every you no know, every five minutes, every hour, whatever is the test you need from these locations. Uh, we will then run this test from these locations you know, on the on demand, and you can define a, a trigger to tell you if um, if one of these tests fails. So in the email notifications here, you now you can define you now if this test were to fail uh, more than four times in a single location you get an email. Now I actually use this to monitor the demonstration environment we're using. So I use this myself to make sure that everything is working. So if, if we get a failed test in a four hour window, four, four consecutive failed tests, uh, I get an email from the system to tell me there's been an issue. We can also integrate with, with webhooks and also we have various other integrations. So here, as you can see here, I've inst installed APM. But also we can go, if I go to add integrations, you see a list here of all the different integrations we have. So you no know, Slack channels, pages, Splunk, New Relic. So um, there are extensive number of integration points you can make to actually take these alarms to push them out to third, third parties. So finally, is now how do you create an API test? So I'm gonna go back to the dashboard. And you can just create a test manually. So that's very simple. You go in and you can manually come in here. Um, I'll give it a name. You'll get a, a blank screen where you can then manually come in here and say, I want to create you know, my test. Here's my endpoint. And you can build it out line by line. You can see here you can add requests. You can add assertions and conditions. So that's um, the manual way of creating tests but also you can import your tests. So this import test button here uh, allows you to import from all these different types. So I can import, I could take a run scope test directly in, as you can see, Smart Bear, Swagger, uh, JSON. The, the CA API gateway is the layer seven product. So we can take um, data from there to create the tests, as well as uh, Amazon's API gateway a half file like we used at the start to create a mock service and as well as postman poor fiddler so lots of different ways and if i created a test using that half file we used earlier then literally you go and create the heart you go and select the half file you import the test that test is now imported and i can now go to it and as you see that's the test so uh, within that half file we've now taken those transactions I can come in here, I can now modify this if I want to. Uh, like I said before, you then set where you want this test to run from, so which locations, and you set your schedule. And as you can see here, you say if you want that to run minute per minute, five minutes, no, whatever schedule you want. Um, you can also set it you know, in a certain environment, so perhaps you want to run tests from a certain location more often than other locations, you can also do that. So that's kind of the, the overview of the whole platform. So I'm just going to go back to my slides to just uh, wrap things up a bit. So what we've shown you is you know, how the BlazeMeter CT platform um, has been in, enhanced on top of BlazeMeter. And the reason we've done this is to, to help you deliver you no know, better experience for your customers, um, to enable you to test easier. And also, you know, we talk about shift left. How can you enable your teams to actually access tools like this? How can you enable your developers? Um, we're hearing more and more about how companies are decentralizing COEs and they're putting those people back into agile teams.
So the teams now you know, have responsibility for, for the testing, but also for the, you know, how do you actually have a mock service? Now, what if you have a service that is not available today and you need it? So how can you actually get that mock service available on demand when you need it? Um, and finally, so we've gone through all this, you now how great Blaze Meter is and Blaze CT is. Um, you can start testing today. So if you go to uh, the blazemeter.com website, uh, you can sign up today. Uh, we have a free package. So on the right hand side, this is the, 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 the free package. So this allows you to run um, performance tests. You can create a mock service that can run, or a running mock service. You can run API tests and you can run GUI functional tests for free. Um, these tests are per month. So you can run 10 performance tests per month. Um, obviously, we then have different packages. You can kind of do pay as you go and you can pay a monthly subscription all the way through to our uh, kind of enterprise customers with our, our enterprise accounts. So what I would say is uh, if you're interested in the product and you're interested in getting more, you trying the product, go to blazemeter.com and sign up. Um, there's also on the website, there's there's blogs, there's lots of videos that you can also use to help you. Um, with that, here's my details. So if you do have a question, no, please no, drop me an email. Uh, my name's keith.pusey at broadcom.com. I'm also on LinkedIn. And what we're also gonna do is, now we're, come to the top of the hour, we're gonna go through and um, go through some questions because I think there's some yes. questions in the queue yeah yeah we've gotten some questions in so far but there's plenty of time if you have a question for T Keith go ahead and use your go to webinar control panel and submit your question we'll try to get to as many as we can uh, but let's go ahead and dive right on in now uh, first question uh, do we need to have an account with CA APM yes yeah, so the, um, it's a good question. So when we talked about the, the integrations with the, the APM tools, uh, basically what you're doing there is you're integrating with your, your existing APM infrastructure. So if you're using uh, New Relic or Dynatrace or CA, uh, you would need that infrastructure to be, to be in place and that deployed to monitor your environment. Um, so you would need, yeah, so you would need a, either, a, well, you need a deployed infrastructure. Um, certainly with CA, with the APM tool, we have a SaaS offering for that. So you can actually sign up online to use our APM monitoring tool. And I think at the moment you can do some amount of monitoring for free. Um, and that also integrates with the Blazemeter platform. Awesome, all right, great. Next question, uh, can you define the headers and payload for the mock services? And can you use the SOAP protocol? Okay, great question, uh, and yes. Yeah, so when you're actually doing the, the mock services, yes, you can define your, your headers, you can define um, what the payload is. Um, we don't, so today, the Blaze CT platform is, is REST-based, it's HTTP-based, it's not SOAP today. Um, but that, that's something we're gonna talk about in a little while, but yeah, so uh, we don't support SOAP with the Blaze CT mock services, but we do support the, um, the upload of you no know, payloads and headers as you as you said okay all right great uh let's see next question how can we integrate blaze meter with dev test lisa uh, uh, whoever asked that question thank you very much because that leads into um a great answer uh <laughs> we, because we're a SaaS platform we, we do pushes into production every two weeks and uh the current integration that we're working on is integration with the dev test product so that's the lisa dev test products so within the next within uh, i think it's the first week in november might be the second week in november um, from the platform where i showed you creating a mock service and then running it uh, what you'll be able to do is um, run uh, a vsc so a vsc is the virtual service engine that we use for dev test uh, that will be available within the platform so your, your engineers can go into the platform, um, they can work with what we call a MAR file to deploy to your VSCs on premise. Uh, and like I said, that's coming in the next few weeks. Uh, and if you want more details, please drop me an email and I can send you more details. Jeez, I don't think that question could have been any more timely, huh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, do you have an on-premises solution? We can't presently use a SaaS offering due to an isolated lab environment. Okay, so the answer is is no. 
So the, the solution itself is SaaS. Um, if you use our private cloud solution, what that means is that all the data actually stays on premise. We, we do work with some customers where you know, security is, is very important. Uh, and that's why we have our private cloud solution. Um, now, what that means is that you can run all of your generators on premise. You can run all the data stays within your firewall. However, it still relies on a connection back to the SaaS platform. Now, I don't know if that's, um, if, if you are a truly isolated environment and your environment is not linked to anything, um, our private cloud wouldn't work for you. Um, what I would say is, you no, know, if you drop me an email, we can discuss it further as to you know perhaps private cloud might be an option or, or some combination. All right. Okay. Excellent. Uh, let's see another question here. Guys, there's plenty of time. If you have a question for Keith, just use your webinar control panel. I think we have time for four or five more questions here. Um, are there any CalDAV products supported in the methods at API endpoint, like report and prop find methods, other than get, put, and post? Um, I must admit, I, I don't know. Um, I don't think there are, but I will make it. I'll take a note and I will check. Um, I can't remember seeing any, but I will. I will go away and I will check, and we can. Uh, we can <laughs> well, check. don't go away yet. Don't go away yeah. yet. <laughs> okay. All right. Next question. Um, let's see. Uh, can the Blaze Meter product integrate with the CA Dev Test product? And that's the question we answered with the uh, the Dev Test Lisa. So yes, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Okay then, next question. Uh, let's see, how would you integrate Blaze Meter into a CICD tool chain? Very good question. Yeah, so um, obviously everything we showed you today was all based around the UI. Uh, and in, in the real world, when you're testing, you're not gonna come to the UI to start test or run tests. So we have integration with, with Jenkins. You can kick this off from uh, a Jenkins system to run the tests and get the results back. Um, that, that's out of the box, we have that plugin. Um, everything we've shown you has an API. So if you would prefer to run this from you know, a, a third party tool uh, and there's not a plugin, uh, you can integrate through the API very easily. It's all documented within the tool itself. Um, so we have full documentation of our APIs. And as I said, everything that we've just shown you for part of this demonstration can be driven through that same API. So when you want to integrate with your, your CI CD tool chain, uh, it's very easy to integrate with the, with the product. All right, great. Okay, uh, let's see. I think we have one more question here we'll get to. So uh, uh, one last call for questions. If you have one, please go ahead and use the GoToWebinar control panel. Next question, um, can you integrate with Blaze Meter from a CLI or IDE? Yes, um, so there's actually various ways we can do this. So when we looked at the, um, the mock services, we actually have uh, something called um, Code SV. So Code SV is a free download that you can uh, incorporate into your IDE. And from the IDE itself, you can do several things. So when you're coding the application, um, you can define the transactions inside the IDE. Um, you can push those to our mock service. So you can, as you're developing your transactions, uh, you can push that to the mock service into our transaction repository. You can also pull them back. So what you can do is, as part of your testing inside the IDE, you can actually say, I want to run a test and I need, um, a virtualized service with certain transactions. Now, perhaps I need all the transactions that were created, which are no, an approved payment. Uh, within the code, all you say is use a tag to say you want no approved payment. Um, the ID itself, when you actually run the test, will go off to our repository. It will get the relevant um, transactions and download them, and you can then use them within your ID directly. So. It allows you to share transactions you know, across the organization. Now, before a virtual um, an API is possibly ready to be used, um, you can put these transactions into the transaction repository. Um, so you can use them and other people inside your organization can use those same transactions. And what you can also do, so that's around the, the code SV and the IDEs. 
Um, also, a lot, all the testing we showed you is based on something called Taurus. Um, and Taurus allows you to not just run tests within our platform you know, from a command line, you can also run tests locally on your own machine. So what that allows you to do is, um, without using BlazeMeet at all, you can use Taurus natively and run your performance test you know, on, your, on your laptop. Uh, and when you're ready, you can choose to then you know, flick a switch and run that same test on the cloud using the, the BlazeMeter platform. So yes, yeah, so we integrate you know, completely with you know, just CLI, API, and with your IDEs. All right, all right, great. Well, we are about five minutes to the top of the hour and we're out of questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out the question and answer period of today's webinar. Thank you to everybody who did submit questions. Um, if you have any questions later on, um, Keith's uh, contact information, as he said, is right there, was right there on the screen, <laughs> is right there again. Um, so feel free to take down his email address and get in touch with him uh, with any questions that you might have about the product or the, uh, the Broadcom in general. Um, also want to remind the audience that today's event has been recorded. So if you missed any or all of it, or if you just want to watch it again, you will have the opportunity to do so. We are going to be sending out an email at the end of later on this afternoon that contains a link to uh, access the webinar on demand. Uh, and the webinar is also going to be living on the devops.com website. So you can always just go there and check it out. Just go to devops.com slash webinar, look in the on-demand section, and it will be right there waiting for you. And while you're there, please check out all of the other webinars that we have, both upcoming and on-demand. Hopefully there'll be one or two there that pique your interest. Keith Pusey, thank you so much for your time today. Great presentation, lots of good information. Great. Thanks very much. Great. And thank you to the audience for joining me today. This is Charlene O'Hanlon, and I am signing off. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks. Bye.